What's happening, friends? Welcome back to Dynamo DeFi. My name is Patrick, and on this channel, I talk about cryptocurrency, decentralized finance, and economics. So if you like those topics, be sure to like and subscribe. Today's video is all about Metis. Metis is an Ethereum layer 2 that has a lot of interesting components and a lot of cool things in their ecosystem being built. So today I'll talk a bit about what makes Metis so unique, how you can bridge to Metis, some of the protocols being built on Metis if you want to start yield farming. And then also I'll talk about some of the risks that I see since that's always important to include with projects like this. Great. So we have a lot to cover. So let's jump right in. So the first thing to look at is what exactly is Metis and what do I mean by Ethereum layer two? Many of you are probably familiar with that, but if you're not, basically Ethereum is the largest smart contract platform. You probably know that. And if you've tried to use it, you know that the fees are extremely high and that's because, because it's difficult for Ethereum to scale. And in general, there are some challenges to scaling blockchains while keeping them decentralized. One of the solutions to that is to build layer twos that are built on top of Ethereum that later that takes some of the computation off chain and then later settle it on chain. So uh, Metis is one of those leading layer two projects. It's been getting a lot of attention and, and it uses something called an optimistic rollup. And if you're not into the technical aspects of it, that, that probably isn't that important to you, but, but it's one of the main types of, of uh, rollups that you see, one of the main types of layer twos. And, and so uh, what makes Metis unique? Because th there are a number of layer two solutions being built right now. Uh, well, one thing that uh, jumped out to me just using it as a user is that it's extremely fast. And I mean, extremely fast. Like, like you click a transaction and then it's instant. By the time you can open your wallet, it's already done. And even on fast blockchains like Phantom, Avalanche, Polygon, usually it takes one or two seconds, but th this is literally, literally instantaneous. Another thing that makes it powerful is that it's EVM compatible. So many layer two solutions for Ethereum, even though they are settling on Ethereum, they're actually not EVM compatible, which may make it more difficult for apps to port over to them. So, uh, so, so that really gives it an edge with attracting developers. Uh, the fees are of course low They're right now. They're still not as low as they could be. They're a few dollars per transaction, which is still, you know, probably ten, a magnitude of 10 or 20 better than Ethereum, uh, but, but shortly, within a month or two, they should be going down to pennies. I'll talk a bit more about that later. And and then they also have a very strong team that I'll, that I'll introduce you to in a bit, and they have some very interesting features they're building that should attract some unique projects to the Metis ecosystem. So a few of those features are, one, they are enabling something called decentralized autonomous companies. So you may have heard de of decentralized autonomous organizations, also known as DAOs. A decentralized autonomous company takes that a step further. And this is actually a concept that has been talked about a lot by Vitalik Buterin, who was the founder of Ethereum going all the way back to 2014. And so basically what a DAC is, is it's a company that takes many of its functions on chain. So payroll would happen on chain the roles within the organization would be kept track of on chain hr functions could be brought on chain and many more things like that so metis is already building tools to enable those sorts of things and if you believe that the much of the world will be connected to the blockchain eventually this is an essential step so a company could for example build out a payroll mechanism to pay people on chain or to pay freelancers on chain uh perhaps even in real time i mean that's one of the one of the functions that's been talked about as a potential function in blockchain for a while is that rather than doing a two week pay cycle, people could actually be paid in real time as they clock in hours, which would be pretty, pretty, uh, crazy. I mean, it has some cash flow implications for the company, but it's, but it's a pretty cool concept. Um, and, and so Metis has built a lot of tools for these, and you can, if you want to see some more about them, you can check it out here at portal.metis.io. Another thing they're, they're building that's pretty, pretty uh, interesting is they are building an NFT bridge. So I think that 
this is probably going to attract a lot of people from the NFT space. And because uh, NFTs are almost entirely on Ethereum right now, there are some good ones on Solana and Near, Tezos and, and other blockchains as well. But the vast majority are on Ethereum. And right now, it's extremely, extremely expensive to mint one, to trade one. During peaks, sometimes it can even be hundreds of dollars. And that really limits how many people can can get involved in, Ether in Ethereum NFTs. And it also limits the types of NFTs you can mint because if it costs you $100 to mint one, uh, you can't really make an NFT that's only worth $20, right? Um, so Metis is building an NFT bridge that they should be launching relatively soon, which will allow people to take their Ethereum NFTs, bridge them to Metis, and then trade them on Metis. And, and I think that that's probably going to probably gonna be pretty popular if it can be proven as a re reliable way to to do that and if they can attract some liquidity onto onto the uh, this layer two solution. Another thing they're doing for NFTs that I think is going to be attractive as well, and, and this is just an announcement they made of their roadmap for this year, is they are building an IPFS-like distributed storage solution onto the chain. And so they'll have native storage on Metis's layer two network. So that means that you could mint an NFT on Metis and have the the uh, metadata in the NFT, it could it could link back to something that's stored in this in this on-chain storage that would be that would be immutable. So right now some NFT, some NFTs link to distributed storage solutions already, but but many of them just link to a web page. Uh, a lot of people don't know that, uh, but many NFTs, depending on how they're set up, just link to a web page that could be changed could be changed later on. And so and so Metis is building in a way that you could actually create that storage solution for the for the content of the NFT through the chain. And, and that's pretty powerful. And by the way, one thing that's cool is they're building a lot of tools to do these things that don't require coding, which I think is going to onboard a lot of new people. While we're up here in the roadmap I, roadmap, I think it's worth noting that this sort of distributed storage is also the same way that they will significantly reduce their transaction costs. And as you can see here, they are expecting it to reduce them from a couple dollars to just a few cents. And so that would be pretty powerful. Uh, now let's take a quick look at the team. So the founder here, Elena Sinel Nikova, is well known in the blockchain space. She founded something called Crypto Chicks, which seeks to get women into blockchain. And she's been in the space and involved in a variety of projects for a number of years. Two of the other co-founders also come from from backgrounds that, that involve a lot of experience building uh, building tech products in the past. Uh, but one person I think is worth calling out is Natalia Emeline, the Gen Genesee DAC manager. So that's those are those decentralized autonomous companies we mentioned a second ago. So she's helping to, or really spearheading that ecosystem. Uh, you may not be familiar with her, but you were probably familiar with her son, who is, in fact, Vitalik Buterin. So, so she is his mother and and as many have noted, that could be part of the reason why Metis has a very close relationship with the official Ethereum Foundation, meaning that they probably have a strong chance of having collaborations with them and being one of the premier layer two solutions, uh, of which they are already well on their way towards becoming that. But I think I think that's worth worth noting as sort of an interesting, interesting tidbit about the project. Some something else that is uh, pretty bullish is. They have a $100 million ecosystem fund. So a lot of these other platforms like Avalanche, for example, have large ecosystem funds to fund projects to build in their space. Metis has their own as well. And, uh, and, and by the way, one reason I think that Metis has a uh, good chance of getting at least some traction is that there are a lot of people in the Ethereum community who are uncomfortable going on to alternative layer ones. You know, on this channel, we like to talk about alternative layer ones, but there are many people who have been in Ethereum for a long time and they're very concerned about security and they're worried about going to other layer ones. Metis, they may be more willing to go to since it is a layer two on top of Ethereum. And furthermore, Metis has its own token, the Metis token, meaning that if they adopt this layer two early, they can actually profit from it. So there's a lot of people who are only in Ethereum who missed out on the boom in Avalanche, missed out on the boom in Luna and Phantom of the past year, and, and you know they might be hungry to to sort of get in the next wave of things, and Metis would be a good chance for them to do that. 
Now, as far as TVL goes, so DeFi TVL, this uh, top part here on DeFi Llama is the different Ethereum scaling solutions than Ethereum itself. So you can see all in all these solutions plus Ethereum have about $110 billion in TVL, $108 billion of which is in Ethereum itself. And then you have Arbitrum with 2 billion, then you have Metis with 300 billion. And you can see that it's the fastest growing in the past week of any of these Ethereum 2 solutions, at least the ones that are tracked on DeFi Llama. And it's passed out Optimism and it's, it still has a ways to go to ke catch up to Arbitrum. But, uh, but if you're thinking in terms of potential market size, certainly you could say, well, Arbitrum has 2 billion, so that would be a 6x from here, roughly. Uh, but, but Ethereum has 108 billion, and of course, a lot of that is not going to move to a layer 2, or it's going to move to other layer 2s. But you could imagine that, uh, that Metis will be going to capture some chunk of that, whether that's 500 million or, or a few billion. Uh, that's basically the market that they are targeting on in addition to the NFTs that are on Ethereum and in addition to these sort of new functions like DAC. So so it's a pretty pretty wide market and based on some of the things I've seen, I think Metis has a good chance of being a leading layer two solution. And by the way, this is, yeah, I have no affiliation with them, no sponsorship or anything. I just think it's a cool project that I wanted to share with some of you. If you are interested in bridging to Metis, there's a couple bridges. Two that jumped out to me are the official Metis bridge, so bridge.metis.io. You can deposit from the Ethereum mainnet to Andromeda. Andromeda is what they call the the uh, Metis, Metis uh, mainnet. And uh, you can bridge a few different tokens, Metis, ETH, Link, Stablecoins. Wow, I have no idea what that is. Uh, but but it works pretty seamlessly. This is the one that I used. One thing to note is that if you bridge a token besides Metis, you will still need Metis in order to make a transaction because it doesn't have free transactions. Uh, but you can get some of that from a faucet uh, on the Tethys Discord. Tethys is one of the leading swaps on Metis. And the website is still loading right here. There it is. So Tethys is the leading swap on Metis. And, and you can uh, get some metis airdrop to you from the faucet on their discord that'll be enough to swap whatever token you bridge over to metis and then you'll have some for transactions another one that that i like is synapse synapse is one of the leading bridges in all of crypto and they recently added metis as well so there it is and uh, i believe they have a way that you can convert some of your tokens directly to metis so you have gas once you get there uh, although I'm, I'm, uh, I haven't tried that out myself. So those are the bridges. And then if you want to get involved in the Metis ecosystem, there is already, uh, there are already several DeFi protocols you could look at. The largest DEX is NetSwap. However, Tethys, which I mentioned a second ago, is rapidly gaining market share. And, and I think Tethys is pretty sleek. It's got pretty good rates. So if you want to farm, Tethys is a great option uh and, and one thing I'll, I'll just load up the farms because there were a couple that jumped out to me so they've got pretty good rates on metis paired with stable coins uh, but i think metis paired with avax is actually a cool option as well as metis paired with phantom so if you like those networks but you also like metis you could you could pair them together and earn a pretty nice yield on these uh, and one thing i want to comment on this is um you know, you could do your due diligence and decide that you want to invest in the token for this exchange yourself. However, when I talk about these farms, a lot of times, um, many times the best option is not to hold the actual token for the farm. So for example, you could invest in this AVAX Metis pool and decide that you don't actually want to hold the Tethys token. You could just compound it back into the pool. And that is a perfectly legitimate, perfectly legitimate option. So, so don't feel like you ever have to necessarily hold the token for this and no disrespect to Tethys because I think it's a great swap but but some people think when I talk about these I'm telling you that you should buy the the token for that exchange that's not always the case another protocol you could look at is Agora DeFi this is a money market on Metis so you can borrow some funds against your current crypto if you're interested another one is Drachma Drachma is similar to Curve but on on the Metis network. 
so you can swap stable coins and stuff like that uh, another one is starstream starstream is an auto compounder so you can take those liquidity pool tokens from net swap from tethys and bring them over to starstream and you can auto compound them here and the final one that i'll call out is hermes hermes is a fork of solid solidly that is launching on metis i think today or tomorrow given how solid they turned out um you know i'm a little bit a little bit skeptical of it but but they, they claim to have changed some of the issues that were solidly's downfall although you know, some of those had to do with things that with personnel things so i i don't know what's going to happen with this but 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 one to watch and and maybe you could watch how these tokens are going to be emitted i'm not going to cover all the details of this but you can check it out hermes.mayadao.xyz if you are interested um, and, and so that's sort of the gist of of what you need to know about metis as far as the risks of it because i think there are several especially with a project like this that is definitely a mid cap it's outside of the top 100. Uh, one risk that jumps out to me is just the the entire market you know with given ge geopolitical things right now there is certainly a possibility that bitcoin could take another dip and if that happens mid caps small caps metis is a mid cap but but coins like this are really really going to take a hit they sort of tr they tend to move with bitcoin on those big downswings or big upswings but with an exaggerated percentage move so so that could certainly drag metis down no matter how good the fundamentals are another thing that i'm uh that i'm cautious about is that the layer one rotation game has played out a lot this year people have moved between different layer ones and <clears throat> and each time it plays out it seems to go quicker and offer fewer returns so binance smart chain way back in the spring of 2021 had absurd returns avalanche had incredible returns uh and then i mean even phantom had really good returns but it's sort of with each successive one it's it's uh sort of been less less drastic and and so i do have some concern that metis will will continue that trend um, which is part of the reason why for me personally it, the way i'm going to play this is i'm just going to hold the metis token i'm not really going for ecosystem plays on this one um a, a, another risk is that some of the unique use cases like dacs are not fully built out yet i think it's cool to be in there early and testing it out and maybe you can help be a pioneer in this space but uh th there's no guarantee that these things will even be fleshed out enough that they're usable this year it might be it might be another year two years and that's perfectly okay but if you're looking for something for short-term investment it's worth considering and uh, another risk that I see just from a user perspective is although I think many people from the Ethereum community will be interested in this from a user perspective except in situations where a chain just totally stops working a layer two basically feels like a side chain so or feels like an alternative layer one so the process of bridging from Ethereum to Metis is virtually the same as bridging from Ethereum to Matic or Ethereum to Avalanche or Ethereum to any other chain it's it, you're using a bridge either way so so i think that that's definitely a concern where they'll have to really build out some unique features in order to convince the the average retail person to go on to metis because it is uh like i said it, it feels just like bridging to another chain even though on a technical level it's not the same um and and that's basically those things are basically in a nutshell what i'd say the risks for metis are but overall really incredible project definitely recommend you check it out and and one and you know i just keep going back to this dac thing because i think one thing that's cool is that over time these different chains and layer two solutions will specialize into different functions and and so right now a lot of them look the same but eventually they'll have their own e very unique ecosystems that have that have apps with sort of no analog on other chains and, and and i'm really excited for that sort of future so let me know down in the comments what you think about metis are you bullish on it uh, do you have any concerns about it and if, as always if there are other projects you want me to cover be sure to drop a request that's all i got till next time this is dynamo DeFi.